tonight I wanted to talk about um, science and technology and how it's uh, considered how it's currently divorced from religion and philosophy in our culture so basically uh, we live we live in an industrial age we have a lot of gadgets around us and I know they make us feel really fuzzy you know, we have all kind of technology that helps us I'm sure every single one of us has maybe used the internet today is that a good guess who has not used the internet <laughs> today okay he didn't <laughs> he's a monk now <laughs> even he uses <laughs> Everyone, no he didn't okay <laughs> So pretty much we all use the internet. We all have all kind of technologies. We have phones, we have little gadgets for taking pictures. You could talk to your friends virtually anywhere. It's an amazing culture. And it's easily it's easy to forget that that didn't really exist at some point in time, right? We think that, oh, it's just always been here and it's always progressing, but uh, many people can tell you, many people from the older generation, <laughs> they'll, they'll testify that you used to have phones. <laughs> I remember the party lines back in the 50s. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, didn't have didn't have a cordless phone with the speak of cell phone you had to, and if you want to turn the TV on you had to walk up and turn on there's no remotes nothing like this um, the list goes on and on so if you take any kind of uh, modern history class or about technology or anything like this uh, that's one of the first things they're going to tell you is the timeline the timeline of human advancement in technology and science so in the beginning they paint a vivid picture that we were you know cavemen and these cavemen you know they were hunting wild animals and they just use their bare hands and they just jump on you know a wild deer and just <laughs> sink its teeth in. and then then they then one then one discovered actually a rock and he, he realized that wow the, the rock hurts if I you know puncture somebody with it so he made a tool out of it and in that way that was the, the first technology so he created a rock and he could kill things and and then you know he got a little smarter he put it on a stick and you know it started getting more advanced <laughs> so in this way uh, really no this is actually what what they're teaching and um, so in this way since the dawn of creation when the unintelligent um, religionists or you could say the archaic uh, outdated fundamentals religionists say that God created everything then this discovery of technology and through technology we can understand human evolution and all these things we start to understand a much clearer picture according to this this uh, history or it's actually kind of a philosophy as well so then everything uh, developed in time and over the course of time man gains more and more control over his environment so we have all this control we have airplanes we can do all these things so basically this is kind of the picture of where we're at now that we started with the most basic tools and that is kind of our goal of life we're trying to conquer over the elements of nature we're trying to uh, become better situated in our struggle for survival our struggle for existence and now with industrial revolution the whole concept is now we're civilized everything has become easy it's very easy to live you don't have to, uh, I guess the concept, the ideal is you don't have to work very much because we have machines doing everything. But uh, in fact, we find in industrial culture, we, we have less time <laughs> than people in an agrarian society. So, um, and then of course, on television, then they paint a very fuzzy picture of what it means to live in our times, to live in America. And we have these whole images of what the American dream is, the American family. And we even have television shows like American Idol, where 
people can fulfill their their dreams to become famous, and they all line up, you know, at the stadiums out here. I think in San Diego they had like a interview, and people just line up, and it's my dream to become famous, to become an idol. <laughs> And then people who can't even sing, like not, not even any song, <laughs> song nicely, they're going up there and showing their talents and getting rejected. And, but this is like the American dream is to become famous. Is, so it's a pretty picture on the outside America. But to, to uphold, everyone knows this by now, to uphold this industrial, corporate civilization, the industrial civilization, it requires a whole lot of suffering and a whole lot of pain just to keep it going because there's not enough resources to keep the system going. So we all know that. And um, so basically to have all this technology, to have all these things necessitates a lot of hard work, a lot of labor. For example, um, in our society, to keep it running, you have to be edu highly educated because the technology we have is so sophisticated that if you do not, uh, if, if the people are not educated, they cannot keep the society going. So there's so much pressure. You just need to be educated like that. So actually, um, I came across something that I kind of wanted to illustrate one point. And um, it's, I think it's, it illustrates very well how important it is to, um, to have science and technology on a, on a proper philosophical and ethical basis. Has anyone heard of uh, the Manhattan Project before? How many people have heard of it? Okay, so we know a little bit about it. Basically, the government in 1942, they were getting ready for World War, and they wanted to prepare an atomic weapon. So this was to be, you know, one of the first atomic weapons. And uh, the weapon itself, um, in order for it t all the studies to go on to prepare for this great endeavor, they had to perform a series of kind of uh, tests and experiments. So they built the, what is it, Manhattan Engineer District, where it was an undercover covert operation where they were testing, you know, these bomb materials, what, plutonium, uranium, all that, and highly, highly radioactive material uh, at a huge, unimaginable quantities that never before had been really tested and dealt with. So the scientists who were working and managing with some of these things uh, started to get some kind of illnesses, right? So I think one lady, she had some liver problem or something. So they said, okay, now we have to see, is it the radiation or is it just something natural that's occurring in our body? So they needed to do tests. So does everyone know what they did? They actually started testing uh, citizens without any knowledge. So they actually, this is documented, this is released knowledge now, that they, they started injecting people in the hospitals who had, who had no knowledge of what this was. And the doctors who were putting this radioactive substance in people, they didn't even know what it was either. <laughs> so all they, all they got was um, from the national defense, you know, some mission, we're doing these tests and you have to, you know, inject patients and it's, whether or not it would help them or not, that, that wasn't even really disclosed either. So really they didn't even know kind of why they're doing it and if there would be any benefit and the people who are getting injected with radioactive, you know, substance, they didn't know either. And they were secretly testing the doctors who were coming to contact and citizens who were coming back to the hospital again and again. So this was some of the things, and then, then they also wanted to see how it would react in the environment. So they started, they conducted numerous, numerous tests, and believe it or not, they actually, um, some of these tests were uh, quite impromptu and spontaneous. Uh, it's, it's described that they actually had professors spray a field next to the University of, Alf of Alfalfa with highly radioactive matter. 
and they just they didn't even really were told what was going on they just said oh there's they knew a little bit but they didn't know anything about how it would react to the environment the procedures all they really knew is they would they had to wear a suit and they were like testing like various simple things but they weren't really told what was going on because it was highly secretive because of the war so um they just went and sprayed parking lots and like <laughs> all this that you can imagine you know this is just like public you know place and um so it, w it was quite amazing and of course um after it came to light and um after you know every the knowledge was released that the first atomic weapon and the world would be changed forever then these things started to come to light about you know this there's no policy there's no policy distribution of radioactive matter uh, amongst people and then um the actually they justified it by saying but we have a war we have a war and we have to defend our country so in order to defend the country, we have to use any means that we can to do so. So we can start to see, you know, of course, the ethical implications are, you know, it's obvious how wrong it was, but they're still being widely discussed. And this is a very, uh, I would say, very important illustration of the difference between science, which is conducted uh, without a philosophical basis or spiritual or religious basis and science which is just devoid of, of any, you know, or science which is, in other words, conducted with alongside some ethical basis. There's a big difference. So it's not that science and technology is inherently bad and it's not that uh, technology in itself is um, wrong but we have to see how the technology is benefiting others. And this is the emblem of materialism. So this industrial culture, it really is a symbol of materialism. And materialism functions on basically one principle. How much can I acquire? Because it's based on this idea that, you know, we're cavemen, we evolved, and the only purpose of life is to survive is to live and survive. However you have to survive, it doesn't matter. That's the law, what they say, the law of the jungle. You have to survive. No matter how you survive, it's okay. We're all animals. The tigers, they're having to kill. They're having to survive however they can. So we're just sophisticated animals. So therefore, it's all just because to create an atomic weapon, it's okay. We're just defending. We're defending, we're, we're trying to exist. People are gonna invade. So in this way, materialism, uh, materialism aims for material acquisition. And that is really the goal. And it doesn't really, you know, very much go beyond that. So uh, this is far different than um, when you, when you look through the eyes of religion or philosophy, or in other words, with a spiritual vision, then we can see that things intrinsically, intrinsically things have value. It, that means that things have value whether we value them or not. In other words, life has value. Uh, people, things have rights. Things have the right to live whether we value it or not. Just like in, I think in the Constitution, it's, it's saying something like, uh, like that. You know, everyone has the right to pursue the truth. Why? Because we hold these truths to be self-evident. So everything has intrinsic value. And in a materialist conception of life, we don't think that things have intrinsic value. So animal rights, yay, animal rights. We give the animals rights. We give the dog rights. If somebody abuses our dog, then we become very angry. But put all the cows in the slaughterhouse and it's okay. So, we, so in other words, even if we give the dog rights, and we take rights away from another animal, it reveals something. It reveals that we don't think that life intrinsically has rights. We don't think that it's intrinsic to the nature of being. That we give rights and we also give, take them away. 
So in other words, we don't even really believe in rights. We think that's not really what's the motivation. The motivation is what will please me, what will satisfy me. So if it satisfies me and pleases me to exploit, you know, a person, to kill another person, to manipulate, it's okay. So that is the materialism, how to use everything as a tool to satisfy one's own personal ends. Whereas in spirituality, then we can see that that is not enough, that we have to acknowledge uh, that everything has uh, this intrinsic value, and not just human beings, and not just animals, but also nature like that. So that is kind of uh, the myth that we are kind of, we are being so-called educated with, is that you know, the goal of life is to become more and more advanced, and as long as we keep producing technology, then we're advanced, we're civilized. And if you go back to a life without technology, without, you know, industry, you're digressing, you're devolving. If you think that there's anything to life that doesn't contribute to the acquisition of matter, you're devolving, you're degrading. Education, wisdom, these things have no value unless it produces money. This is what we're, you know, currently, that's kind of currently what's being taught. Unless it gives you money, it has no value. So, actually, things have intrinsic value outside of money. So, this is a spiritual vision. And, um... It's very important, you know, we can see why, you know, we have to uh, merge the two. You know, why should science be divorced from philosophy? Actually, it shouldn't be. It can't be. It cannot be. So it has to be, uh, both there has to be balance. It cannot be all religious. If something's all religious, then it's just, you know, blind belief. I have a belief. I have a religion. I have a faith. So what, you and seven billion other people, everyone's got a faith. So science, it's all about science, it's all about technology, it's all about discovery. And then, then you have, you know, atomic bombs, you know, no ethics, no philosophy. So there's a balance, and that balance is uh, what we need to, I say, what we need to strive for is to find that balance, because especially in this, this society which we live, uh, more and more we're becoming dependent on technology, so more and more we're going to have to strive harder and harder to actually achieve the balance. So it's better to go prepared, um, especially as we become more and more you know, dependent upon such things. So we can actually uh, view things properly in a in balanced way.